Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're gonna uh, take some regular gallon paint buckets and turn them in to some spring decor. And we're gonna do uh, arrangements in these. I have three that are empty right now. And the newer paint buckets are plastic. So when the paint dries in them, what's left in the bottom, you can just peel that right out. Um, not so much around the rim, but that doesn't bother me at all. Uh, just to leave that, I think it actually adds some character. So I'm gonna paint uh, all three of these buckets uh, in the color Buttercream. Um, no, actually, I think I used drop cloth here. So I, I put two coats of the color drop cloth, uh, but I think Buttercream would work just as well. And uh, like I said, I give it two coats and uh, I put, even paint the rim around the top uh, on two of them because they had white paint in them. Uh, but the third one has a soft pink paint in it and um, because it had that pink around the top, I just decided to go with that and just paint uh, the drop cloth right up next to it. And on that one, I'll just kind of implement that color into my arrangement and uh, that will kind of make it go together. Now for this particular bucket, I'm going to make some clay molds and uh, I'm going to use my crafty clay that uh, doesn't work real well in my molds. Uh, so I'm just going to use it and roll out uh, a... Um, some of the dough to about one eighth inch thick maybe. Uh, and then uh, I'm just gonna make some impressions with my uh, stamps. And so you do that just by rolling that out thin. And then I didn't, uh, but it, it helps if you add some of the cornstarch to your um, stamp so that it doesn't stick. So that's something I would have done differently, but I inked up my stamp just a little bit with some of the antiquing ink because I wanted to add some dimension in the color here. So as you can see, I just kind of roll it across and that will make that impression in the clay. And then you can just trim your re remaining clay off and then glue that right on. And um, I started to peel this off or tear it off, but it, it cuts really well with the scissors also so I just cut that off and I did the same thing with my script stamp on the other side and uh, before I apply those I'm just going to take some of my script stamp and just kind of randomly stamp it just to add some layering to my bucket so I want to give this some aging so I'm just going to go um, go over this especially around the top and the bottom with some of my antiquing ink uh, just to kind of make it look more uh, more aged and like I said I'll concentrate it more around the top and the bottom and then just kind of feather it a little bit into the rest uh, just to kind of make it look more authentic. Obviously that step is completely up to you if you don't like yours to look more primitive just leave it uh, just leave it the white. So now I'm ready to apply my molds and I'm just going to do that with some tight bond glue. So just kind of spread a little of an even coat on the back and glue it straight on. And now I'm using that same ink and using some of, uh, some of the uh, lettering that's on it and, and stamp that on the top. So I'm going to use different stamps and even some stencils to add some lettering to this, but I'm showing you on this one that you can tape off what you don't want to be on there and then peel that away after you ink it and then stamp it on. And that'll keep it from getting what you don't want on there. And I'm going to stamp this little B on here and like I said, I'll use some lettering from some of my other stencils. If you don't have stencils that fit the project that you want, just use piece, pieces of them. And you can take those off also. Uh, so just kind of build uh, what will fit on your can. Because it's really hard to find uh, a stencil or a stamp that exactly fits your project anyway. So um, especially when it comes to this French uh, 
script. You don't really know what it says anyway most of the time, so just put, put what you think fits and looks good together. Now I wanted some faint color on this, uh, so I I'm gonna use uh, some purple, but I'm gonna do it with eyeshadow because I want I don't want it to show up a lot. I just want it to be a very soft uh, coloring. And I know that the, the eyeshadow is not permanent, but I'm gonna mist it with uh, some uh, a clear matte finish. Uh, so I'm just gonna spray that lightly and let that dry and spray another coat and let that dry and that will, it will stay very well. But I just didn't want to use ink or paint on this because, like I said, I wanted it to be very soft. And I'm just going to do these roses and do some purple uh, and, and then green for the leaves. And again, I'm just, I want this to be very soft. Now, I've had a lot of questions about what sealer I use. Sometimes I use Krylon. And I usually try to use a matte finish. Uh, sometimes I use the Krylon spray. Sometimes I use uh, Rust-Oleum clear matte finish. Uh, and then sometimes I just brush uh, some polyurethane on it or some polycrylic. Usually I use a polycrylic and that's a water base. Uh, but you really don't have to concern yourself so much with what sealer you use. You just want to seal it with something even if it's just a clear wax. Obviously in this case I can't use a clear wax because I don't want to brush anything on uh, because uh, of this eyeshadow. So it has to be sprayed with something. But I don't get hung up on brands very much. I, I love Dixie Bell paint. It just works really well for me and I sell it in my store so that's why I use that. But I use other brands if I have them because, um, you know, I find that they all do a pretty good job. I'm just kind of uh, sporadically putting this on this can. I don't, uh, I just want a little here and there. I don't want it to be precise at all. So just wherever I feel like it needs a little bit of color, then I just do this. And um, I'll try to link the stencils uh, that I can on this. Uh, some of them I've had a while, and it's hard to find them to, to link them. But honestly, just use anything similar. You're just wanting this look. You don't have to have anything precise, especially since this stenciling is just going to be very faint. And now at this point, I've already sealed it. So uh, I want to um, bring out some more of this detail in the stamp. So I'm just using some Van Dyke Brown glaze, and this is a Dixie Bell glaze, but again, any brand that you wanna use is gonna work. So um, I just want to do a little antiquing, a little more antiquing on this, but I especially want to bring out uh, more of that detail. So I just kind of rub it on and rub it off and uh, because I've already sprayed a clear coat on this then I don't have to worry about it taking too dark. And now because my friend sent me lots of lace uh, I have this beautiful vintage uh, ribbon or lace and I'm just I want it because it's small and I like the vintage look of it and I'm just going to glue it around the top and then around the bottom. I just want just a touch of that color and it goes really well with the, the color in the roses here. So I just glue this all around the top and then all around the bottom and, um, and I feel like that adds just enough color to this. And now the only thing I'm going to add to this is a um, shabby bow and I do that by just cutting some strips of fabric and some strips of lace and um, I want them all to be the same length and I think these are probably about four inches long and I'm even recycling some here from uh, an old stained um, runner I think this is and um, I'm just going to kind of mix these up. I wanted it to be warm. The colors should be warm, but I wanted a little bit of that purple in there. So 
Um, I just, like I said, stri cut these strips of fabric and then I'm just going to arrange them and uh, tie them together. And um, that that's all that there is to making these little shabby bows. And as you can see, I just stuck some flowers down in there. I didn't do any kind of arrangement in this one. I just wanted it to be just like a, a little bucket full of flowers. So that's the first one. And now for the second one, I'm going to use this transfer, one of these transfers uh, from this set that I just ordered from Amazon. And these are the cutest little bunnies. And um, they have several in them. So uh, I'm going to use one of these. And the one there on the top, I'm going to use on another bucket. Somehow I didn't get that footage, but that's going to be on one side of one of the other buckets. But this bottom one here is what I want on this one. So I just cut that apart there. And... Um, I've already sealed this bucket uh, underneath this because I want to make sure that this uh, doesn't pull my paint away. So uh, I'm just going to transfer that right there on the bottom. But again, this one is the bucket that I had the pink on the top of. And I want to add some more of that um, eyeshadow color underneath this. So uh, I picked up this little postcard stencil at Amazon and um, so I want to kind of put this on one side I thought about putting it under my bunny here and just like letting some of that show but I decided I wanted to do this on one side of my bucket so I'm going to do this stencil with uh, with some ink so I'll do I'll take this off at, which was a mistake because I didn't seal this side of the bucket and because of that it pulled a little of that paint off but that's okay I'm, I'm fine with it uh, having that distress I wanted to show you these brushes these are what I use for my stenciling when I'm stenciling with ink and I usually order those from Amazon but my Dollar Tree had these and so I thought it was uh, I thought I would get some of those and show you guys uh, that you can buy these very cheap uh, at obviously at uh, the Dollar Tree. So I hope yours has them, but like I said, mine just got them in. So, uh, so this postcard stencil, I'm going to do some of it with with the eyeshadow in the flowers, and then the rest I'm going to do with black stays on ink. And again, then I'll spray seal it afterwards, and and this uh, eyeshadow will be sealed in. But I just wanted to add a little color in with this stencil, uh, again, because I want to bring this pink down. So, um, I thought this was a good way to do that. But I just love this stencil, and I'll link it in the description because I know I can find it. I just purchased it. And then I'm also adding a little bit of green in, in the leaves here. And I had to mix some of that green with some yellow to get the right color of green. Because, again, I want that to be a really soft color. I think this one turned out to be my favorite because I just really like the soft colors with the black script. I think, I think that was a really pretty look. And, like I said, the, the paint that was left around the top of this, I think, only helped. And now I want to add my, my um, transfer to the other side. So, I thought this little bunny was perfect for this bucket. And again, on this one, um, I just used another uh, stamp, or another stencil, rather, that, uh, actually a large one, and just used some bits and pieces from it to, um, to fill in where I felt like it needed some extra uh, writing. So, like I said, if you don't have the right materials, then make what you have work. I think... Sometimes uh, you'll find that uh, you're happier with your piece that way. So I love these soft colors for Easter. That's another reason I guess that this one was my favorite. Uh, but I think it's very pretty Easter decor and very pretty spring decor. And it has a really shabby chic look to it. And I'll uh, attach as many of these stencils as, as I can. Um, 
but like I said, you don't have to stick with any certain ones. I know that you're not going to buy all of these just to do this project, so uh, just use bits and pieces. Now, once I get everything on this that I feel like it needs, uh, then obviously it needs an arrangement in it. So, um, I'm just going to glue some um, styrofoam in the bottom. And I'm using a harder styrofoam on these, uh, which is not ideal at all. I just thrifted it, and um, so I like to uh, get that when I can get it at a good value. And uh, it just makes it a little bit harder to arrange, but that's okay. I can make it work. And I just glue that right in the bottom. And then I'm just going to use bits and pieces of floral. Uh, and I got to looking at my stash of, um, of spring florals and realized that I need to stock up. So I have to do that, but I couldn't do that today. And, um, and so I just used bits and pieces of what I had and that works well with floral. You may get something that you think looks very cheap, but maybe there's parts of it that, uh, that on their own look, look more, um, uh, just look better than not as cheap as the others rather. So I'm just using bits and pieces on this and just kind of playing with it and seeing what, uh, what I can come up with. And I love using my florals up because they tend to get out of hand. So uh, this way I can get rid of some of these and just kind of cut what I want to use off and throw the rest out. So it kind of helps me clean up too when I run out for a little while. And like I said, and, and as you can see, uh, this hard styrofoam makes it really hard to uh, to do my arrangement. But it just, just takes a little longer. It takes a little bit more effort. Uh, but it does work. So, like I said, I like to use this stuff up. And I like to save money on it when I can. So, once I got the arrangement the way I wanted it, then um, I decided to uh, stick a couple of styrofoam eggs on a skewer stick and put those down in there just to add a little extra Easter to this. And I've had people ask where I get my styrofoam eggs. A lot of times I get those at the Dollar Tree and then uh, just kind of give them a different finish. Uh, sometimes uh, I thrift those, and I, I was able to thrift a lot of these last year. Um, but then I also ordered some just plain styrofoam, different sh or sizes of styrofoam eggs from Amazon. So um, these things are just readily available everywhere. And uh, like I said, Dollar Tree has them, and they even have them already on the skewer stick. Uh, and then you just have to kind of change up the finish on it however you want it. So once I get the arrangement the way I want it, uh, then all this one needs is a, um, is a bow. So I'm just going to tie some ribbon around the top with a bow and um, to finish this one off. So I'll just tie that around the top. And then make another shabby bow and uh, and then glue that to to my ribbon. And like I said, I just really like how this one turned out. And the good thing about this one is after Easter, you can just leave it on this side. So unless you're someone who likes to decorate with bunnies all year round, because I don't think they're limited to Easter at all. So the third one that I'm going to do is I'm going to use that other transfer that I showed you that I wasn't able to get on on video. Uh, so I'm going to do the tra that transfer to one side, and then on the other one, on the other side, uh, this side, I'm going to decoupage uh, part of this napkin on here. So uh, I'll just cut that out or, or cut one. Uh, fourth of that out there so that I can have 
uh, three more images for other projects. And then uh, I'm going to separate these layers and uh, decoupage only one, only one layer on. And to tear this out, I'll take a, a little bit of water on a little paintbrush and outline around it and then tear it. And that's just an easier way to tear this out. And then I'll just decoupage this on with some, uh, with some Mod Podge and uh, let it dry. So if you don't have transfers or don't want to spend the money on transfers, then this is an, another easy way to, uh, to decorate your bucket. And then I took my typesetting stamps in the lower case, and, uh, and then I'll stamp the word spring on the top. And uh, where the rim around the top came out a little bit, it kept my stamps from making good contact. So I just uh, kind of took one at a time and, and uh, neatened it up. And then, uh, like I said, I did the other transfer on the other side. Now I wanted to antique this one up, but I didn't want it to grab too dark, especially since I decoupaged with the napkin. So once this dry, dried well, then I went over it all with a clear wax and coated it really well with that uh, before I did my, uh, my glaze because, like I said, I just didn't want it to take too dark and I knew that clear wax would uh, keep that from happening. So anytime you're going to add either a brown wax or an antiquing uh, or a brown glaze, rather, uh, then then try the the clear wax first because it does give you a lot more control and then if you get too much on it wipes away it much easier and again i want to antique this up and i want to concentrate more around the top and the bottom and i wanted to keep this a little more simple uh, i didn't want it to look shabby chic at all i just wanted it to somewhat look farmhouse so i just decided to make a farmhouse style shabby bow and put on the top of this and like i said then that keeps these colors more neutral and it will go with the napkin on the back also uh, so what i'll do is i'll just wrap some jute twine around the top several layers and then uh, attach this shabby bow to that jute twine. Now I haven't bothered to do anything with the handles. You could rust those up if you wanted. Mine had a little paint on them and I kind of like that look so I didn't do anything to any of these handles. And now this one will get a spring arrangement and I'm gonna again keep the colors more farmhousey. I'm gonna put some yellow flowers in this and uh, just give this one a, a completely different look. And here I am struggling with this hard uh, foam, but most of the time, uh, most of these flowers will do well in those. These here are just a little soft stemmed and they're, they were just a lot harder to get in. So I'm just going to add some of these yellow flowers and some greenery and grasses and just give this one a real springy but still eastery look. So once I got this one arranged the way I wanted it, then I'm just going to make a little sign to go on this one. So I'm taking a little piece of cardboard here and I've antiqued around the edges and now I'm just going to make a little sign uh, and uh, glue that to a skewer stick and just stick it down in that foam and uh, that'll be a good little finish to this arrangement. I wanted to take the opportunity to thank another one of my viewers. Her name is Chris and uh, she sent another box of just beautiful, beautiful lace. And again, the box was just packed full. I'm just blown away by you guys and your generosity. There's just so many wonderful people in this world who uh, have such a heart. And I think so many of them are right here on this channel. And I'm just so grateful to you. I just can't thank you enough. I feel so blessed to have you guys, um, all of you, be a part of my channel. Now again, I've kept this little arrangement simple. 
Uh, I kind of just wanted it to look like a little flower garden, just like, um, just like it says. And uh, so I wanted to not make it look really arranged. I wanted it to look very natural. So I'm thinking for my next um, video, I'm going to do some, um, some tin cans, maybe some arrangements, and I don't know, I might come up with something else to do with them, but uh, where some of you don't have paint cans, all of us can come up with some vegetable cans. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.